Questions 32 to 35 in the Acer Blue Paper. Question 32. According to figure 1 of the following, the greatest total amount of oxygen consumption. So, we've got to figure out uh, in which of the following scenarios, A, B, C, and D, the most amount of oxygen consumption occurs. Um, to do that using figure 1, what you've got to do is, well, we're given on the y-axis the oxygen consumption per unit of time, and on the x-axis we're given the number of days. So to figure out the total amount of oxygen consumption over a period of time, you just find the area under the graph over that period of time. So for example, for question for answer A, um, in the Mali fowl between day 50 and day 60, the amount of oxygen consumed by the Mali fowl is... Um, this area. Um, so basically what you need to do is do that for each of the scenarios A, B, C. Try and figure out which one has the greatest area under the graph and you'd quickly find that the correct answer is A. So for question 33 we're asked to find the estimate of the total amount of energy produced by the Mali fowl during a 60 day incubation period. So to do that we go to figure 1 and using the right hand sided um, right hand side of y axis, the metabolic rate and the incubation period, the x axis, we can find the, that amount of energy. So what we've got to do is for this particular graph we've got to find the area under the curve um, over the 60 period day and obviously that's quite difficult because this is a curved graph. However, what we can do is we can sort of approximate this graph and instead of um, trying to find the area under a curve, what we do is we imagine it as a triangle and we find the area under this triangle. <clears throat> so basically, um, we're trying to find the area under the graph of a triangle in which the time period is 60 days and the me maximum metabolic rate is 0.3. So therefore, to find the total amount of energy, what we do, so um, note that the metabolic rate is in seconds whilst the x-axis is in days. So we're going to convert the um, number of days, which is 60, into seconds. So 24 hours in a day, 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute. Um, and then we times that by the uh, metabolic rate, the height of the triangle. And because it's a triangle, to find the area under a triangle, we've got to half all of that because the area under a triangle is equal to half base times height. Right. So, um, just quickly figuring this out, what we get is 3,600. Those 260 times together times 24 times uh, 60 times 3 on 10 times 1 on 2, which is equal to 3,600 times about 20. So, we should really say that. So, this is a, about... 3,600 times uh, th times 20 times um, so 60 times 3 on 10 that's about 18 which is a uh, yep so we'll do that <clears throat> times 20 times 20 so we're just rounding that 18 up to 20 times half which is equal which is about equal to 3,600 times 20 times 10 7,212 so that's the number of joules uh, and to convert that into kilojoules we just divide that by 1,000 so 720 kilojoules um, and that's very close to the answer of C so therefore the correct answer for question 33 is C so question 34 is a little bit of reading comprehension. Question 34 asks us which of the following features pr present in the brush turkey embryo or egg is least likely to specifically suit the bird to its unusual incubation environment or parenting approach. So the key words here are, is the this phrase, least likely to specifically suit the brush turkey. So we've got to find a adaption which isn't really likely to assist the brush turkey and also doesn't specifically assist the brush turkey so isn't just unique to the brush turkey so if we look at the stem there is one line that really stands out and that is this that the brush turkey embryo like that of other birds has an egg tooth which can be used to break the shell 
However, it primarily uses its large feet to break free. So this line is really important because um, one, it illustrates that the egg tooth, whilst it um, can be used to egg the shell, to break the shell, sorry, it is not usually used. Usually it uses its large feet. Um, and that the egg tooth can be found in other sorts of birds. So therefore, the answer A, that the egg tooth um, is least likely to specifically suit the bird, is the correct answer for question 34. So in question 35, we're asked to find a graph that suitably displays the relationship between the heat produced in the mound minus heat loss from the mound and the mound temperature at location of the egg minus stable incubation temperature at location of the egg. So the information in the stem that is going to help us with this is in paragraph one, the last sentence. So if the mound temperature is below the stable incubation temperature, the rate of heat production in the mound is faster than the heat loss. Basically, we'll gain heat. So basically, if our mound temperature is colder than the stable incubation temperature, this ideal temperature we're trying to get to, um, what will happen is uh, the rate of heat production in the mound will be faster than the heat loss, so we'll gain heat. So if we're below, if we're colder than the stable incubation temperature, what happen is we will um, sort of increase our heat and we'll go back towards that stable incubation temperature. And the um, reverse is also true. So if uh, our mound is getting too hot, what will happen is we'll lose more heat than we gain. So our mound temperature will go back down towards that stable incubation temperature. So basically, at all points in time, the mound is designed to sort of return to the stable incubation temperature. So we've got to figure out a graph that represents that, um, and that is this one. So we can see that if the temperature in the mound relative to the stable incubation temperature is below, so if we're colder than the stable incubation temperature, what will happen is the heat in versus heat out will be positive, so we'll be gaining heat. So if we're below, if we're colder, we will be gaining heat. Um, and the inverse is also true. If our um, mound temperature is too hot, what will happen is um, we will be losing heat. So the heat out will be greater than the heat in because it's the negative side here. So therefore, um, if we're too hot, we will lose heat. And, so, and that's sort of in line with what we've been reading that the uh, mound has been designed to always return to this stable incubation temperature that if we're too hot, we'll lose heat, and that if we're too cold, we'll gain heat. So therefore, D is the correct answer.